So we're pulling the barn Mustang out here. It's filthy under here, but. Completing cross thread that. He had to replace the master cylinder. It's like totally. Yeah, this is my brakes from doing my brakes on my trailer yesterday. But in the bottom of this, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's all rusty. And the seal on the piston has a chew mark in it. Right there. Barely see it, but it's enough to leak all over your feet while you're driving. So we had to replace it. Thank goodness we had a 68 Galaxy sitting around that has the same master cylinder, so. As you can see, this doesn't get out very often. So, Cordell will take it down and run it through Devil's Run, the parade, whatever else. It'd be good to have brakes while we're throwing candy at little kids. Meanwhile, Tiffany's at home, stapling flyers, I'm sure. She cleaned up her car and I'm sure is stapling flyers. I am not very good at filming myself recording myself we're getting ready for our car show that we organized and we're going to go to one tomorrow to advertise for ours here so i'm stapling the last stack of um, flyers and registration forms that we put in cars and I think I've been doing this for like two hours. I have already two stacks about this high that the phone is sitting on. I literally grab two pieces of paper with my baby stapler and that's it. <laughs> it's not, not glamorous. Tomorrow it should be fun. We've gone to every show for the last I want to say 13 years. We had to miss two years. One year we were in Milwaukee. Another year it just poured rain and was like, what's the point? But we usually go every single year. So I'm excited. So today on, on Breakfast Soapbox, uh, we wanted to, uh, we were actually on our way heading out to work and we were watching some of these, uh, I guess these news reports on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square protest massacre. And that kind of got us thinking about some things, so we kind of worked up this uh, uh, video we wanted to do quick. Um, there's There's been a lot of the reports that are saying, talking about the censoring that's going on to such an extent that uh, people living in China, if they were born after that date, don't even know it existed. Yeah, it's hard with news, you know, propaganda being what it is in media and in news. Who knows how much of that's really true, but, you know, the reality of Chinese censorship censorship is rarely debated. Right. And uh, there's been a lot of these interviews with uh, student protesters that were there. And uh, one of those students, uh, well, he's been forced into exile for the last 30 years, and he says he hasn't seen his family since. And that kind of got us thinking. That's pretty much what Jehovah's Witness hierarchy does. Force you into silence about any authoritative, abusive actions. Yeah, and not even mention of wrongs. And... Uh, a victim is encouraged to keep quiet right. and, and uh, I say encouraged, mm -hmm. uh, to keep quiet and uh, not to bring reproach on Jehovah's name, meaning not to bring reproach on their government. Yeah. And, and if you do speak up, you're forced into exile. Right. And if you think that's a little bit dramatic, here's the definition of exile. We've got that on the computer here, so let me bring that up. The state of being barred from one's native country, typically for political or punitive reasons or as punishment. Mm -hmm. Synonyms, banishment, expulsion, deportation, eviction, uprooting. Yeah, how is that not the same as being disfellowshipped? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, at least spiritually speaking, all those things apply. Mm -hmm. They want to talk about it being a spiritual paradise or a spiritual government well there you go so this is a spiritual exile mm -hmm. now none of this would be a big deal if they didn't say it was a theocracy or god ruled but it seems like they have more in common with modern communism than a theocracy and i say modern communism as defined because that isn't what communism in its raw form uh, as defined as community owned 
is actually more democratic in nature versus what today's communism actually is. State-owned, hierarchy-owned, mm -hmm. which is exactly what Jehovah's Witnesses have become. With the transfer of Kingdom Hall ownership to the branch instead of the local congregation, selling Kingdom Halls at will, then setting fixed congregational donations as burdens of tax that need to be fulfilled by the congregation, censorship of any of its practices at the risk of expulsion, having to go into exile, in reality it's becoming a mirror of modern communism. Just claiming it's a theocracy doesn't fill the true definition of theocracy, the pure definition anyways, mm -hmm. any more than calling today's autocratic China communism means it fulfills the true and pure definition of what communism is. Yeah, in reality, what government doesn't claim some divine backing? I mean, in the country we live in now, the money that's printed, it says, in God we trust, that's right. or the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under God. Yeah, it's funny to say, but most modern rulership ideas can find positive scriptural backing. Uh, communism, democracy, even monarchy. In fact, Jesus Christ's rulership will be a monarchy. But does that mean that they are truly a pure theocracy? It seems we can look at the results and say no. I mean, David was even said to sit on Jehovah's throne. But would you call the results ruled by God when David, for example, slept with Bathsheba and had her husband Uriah executed? It wasn't a true theocracy. The only theocracy that ever was mentioned in the scriptures is when Adam and Eve were ruled directly by God. David's rulership was a monarchy. Even Jesus Christ's rulership, though he will do things exactly as his father would, it's still not a theocracy in the purest sense. Yeah, and the scriptures say that Christ is going to hand the governance back over to his father to make it a true theocracy. Right. A true theocracy is a person being ruled by God, not a person ruling over other people while claiming that his rulership is based on God's principles. That's the flawed governments that we have today, and Watchtower is just another one of them and turning out to be like the ones that aren't spoken very highly of by its exiles. If you go to North Korea, I'm sure you'll have a hard time finding someone that doesn't speak positively about the hierarchy. But does that mean it's a righteous rulership and God run? And I'm sure we've all heard of that story in the Watchtower article about the um, old Cole Porter brother who says it doesn't belong to man to govern another man. Yeah, so there's only been one rulership in the Bible, again, back to Adam and Eve, where it was a true theocracy. Everything else is just man's claims of an actual theocracy, and anybody can claim that they are ruling by God's principles and totally screw it up. But there's one form of rulership in the Bible that has absolutely no positive, principled, biblical support, and that's a dictatorship, whether in a monarchy or an oligarchy. Now, it, we're gonna, I found this interesting F definition, and it's, I'm pulling it up on the computer here, and it's uh, about dictatorship. And I'll read through this and just do a little commentary as we go through. Because the, the difference between a monarchy or an oligarchy, and monarchy means one person ruled. Oligarchy just means as a group that rules. But dictatorship could be applied to either. Here, they're applying it to monarchy. So, here it is. Dictatorship is similar to absolute monarchy in the sense that all powers are vested in a single person or entity in the case of an oligarchy. But a dictator does not inherit power because of succession. And you might think of uh, Jesus Christ getting his rulership because he's in the Davidic line. And there's a scripture that lays out the whole genealogy for that. Back to the reading here. Rather, he usurps power through a coup and stays in power by altering the constitution of the country. Now, that's interesting because I heard one circuit overseer say, the Bible is our constitution. So here it is. They usurp and alter that constitution. <laughs> Continuing in the reading here. A dictator is very powerful and stays in power through sheer force. Dictatorship is a form of governance that takes shape when a commander in the army, Jehovah's army, acquires great powers that he, 
or the entity, utilizes to stage a coup and depose an elected government. Well, elected government in this case is opinion. It could be any other sort of governance. It could be a monarch throwing a coup to uh, get rid of a monarchy. But it's just an illegitimate as far as, uh, well, in this case it's illegitimate. He declares himself as the president or the CEO of the country and passes laws to this effect. Now, it's interesting because this is what a dictator can do. He can give himself any title that he wishes in order to make it pretty. As Again, sort of like Trump said to President Xi of China, uh, you're king. And when Xi said, no, I'm president, he said, you're president for life. That makes you king. So... This individual declares himself, gives himself whatever title he wants, president, CEO, faithful slave, whatever he wants, and passes laws to this effect. Continuing in the reading, he suppresses all opposition by crushing them violently or putting all opposition behind bars or putting them in exile or forcing them into exile, disfellowshipping them. Continuing, Dictatorship believes in the superiority of the state and that people exist for the state and not the state for the people. Hmm. Interesting there because uh, it goes into ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Or as Jesus said, the Sabbath came into existence for man, not man for sake of the Sabbath. Or the laws there for people, not people, to fulfill the law. So there you have it. It seems Jehovah's Witness hierarchy resembles more of a dictatorship on God's throne rather than a theocracy. So that's all we have today. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe, share, and leave us a comment. So I got loaded up this morning and uh, got the cars down here to Devil's Run. We're at the Chamber of Commerce getting registered. Now we're going to go do the parade lineup. It's super bright today. I'm sitting in the Mustang, my 65, my Tiffany box. We're getting ready to do the parade. I've got my little dog here. So this is a Devil's Run parade lineup. What are you videoing, Dolly? Hi. And it goes all the way around the corner. We restored that coronet right there. <laughs> and by the time the parade starts, it'll go down and There'll be cars lined up out and around the street, too. This is the lineup. Where's Chad? What are you What are you videoing, Dolly? Uh, this guy. So we're next up in line. All the lines have gone through, and now it's going to be our turn. We always get here late. We got this enjoyed love or enjoy life or whatever that enjoy. Enjoy love. Because it's a popcorn company. Here's the name of it right here. If you're interested in some popcorn. Popcorn and uh, seasoned pretzels. It's good. And then we got Cordell behind us. Right there. So that van is an international metro. We actually had one of those that we hauled to Florida with a snap-on van. They've got boxes of that stuff in there. 
Van boxes. We usually skip the kids at the beginning here because, or the children I should say, they're not goats, in the beginning here because as you can see they don't even pick up all the candy that's there, they get thrown so much. The little ones. But you get to the end and there it's kind of slim pickings because people run out. So we hold it to the end. All the older ones. There's a nursing home right here. They always started at the nursing home so that the older ones can ha have a an enjoying a parade. <laughs> it's kind of fun. That's great following this van because all the adults stand up to grab the pretzels and the popcorn. <laughs> Adults coming out from the woodwork to get that stuff. It's hilarious. <laughs> Might break out for it over there. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> what happened? She made it, the other girl grabbed one out of there. And... I almost got to see a brawl over those pretzels. <laughs> light then it starts to get heavy. It's starting to feel warm, huh? Outside? Yeah, but not too bad. I feel warm. My legs start to feel warm, I'll tell you that. Yeah, my legs are starting to feel warm. Well, try trading off, it's my left one that's feeling warm. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've done the clutch thing in a breed before. Sixty-five. Oh, we made it! Did you see that? Thank you. <laughs> so six banger. You don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> it's a gas mileage machine. How are you? Okay, hold your bags out. Let's see if I can make one. Oh, wow. That was amazing. Oh, did we get two out of three? Somebody stop me. Thank you. Oh. Ooh, Hi. What? You don't look like you Tiffany. I'm Tiffany. This is my Tiffany bag. <laughs> she needs a chauffeur. Sports bar they pulled us into. Where do we want to park? Uh, we can park by the truck if you want. I'm Not just trying to think of the easiest exit out of here. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't matter. Once you're in there, you're in there. Yep, and I think it would be a pretty easy exit because all you got to do is get on the road. Right there. Where we're parked, you know, because it's on the kinda road. I like parking out here, though. Okay, park out here, then. I don't need anything in the truck. I've got everything with me. Okay. That breeze feels super good. Are you going to park here? I guess not. I think I'll drive through. That's a nice, that's a nice uh, is that a 57? Yeah. It are. I wonder if we'll see that Ferrari here.
there's the buggy that bug's been to our show. Who those trophies are ours? Yep, those ones with the flames, those came from our show. So this is what the lunch is. For 50 bucks you get like three meals if you're here for them all. Chips and four meals. Well, Sunday morning they have breakfast and then there's three today. And then... Is there one? There's Friday. There's but, one Friday night too. That's kind of the crowd. This, they'll do the steak fry later on here tonight. But first we... It's kind of a different show. It's broke up. So we uh, go to where the Mustangs meet up. And then Corvettes go and meet together and other brands. Makes, models, whatever. We gotta find our friend. What's up, buddy? Ferrari man. Who's the dude on the big bike? <laughs> Jeez. Hi, Tim. Hi. Oh, look at what we got here. This is Swiffer. Hi there. Hi. Do you want your phone back? What are you up to, man? Buddy? Long time no Friends see, together man. at last. Oh, way too long. Jeez. <laughs> We're on our way to a Mustang meet. <laughs> okay. A friend driving the red 70. We have a Mustang meet up here at Pops Bar and Grill. <laughs> Elders would be talking to me. We were in the left. You can't go there and have a beer. Somebody did say something about that bar when we were down here before. They're like, that's where the homosexuals hang out. <laughs> don't remember that? I don't remember. And it's like, how do you Let's know this? Let's see if we could start more rumors. How do you know this? <laughs> here we are. We are here. But here's the Mustang meat. I think it's kind of funny. There's our cars right there, by the way. Um, here comes Chad and Cordell. He's the one that's driving the 70. That's probably a, a whole it's funny to watch these guys come down. So do I. So I forgot to video. This is what we get for Steak, dinner. beans, potato salad, which I already did. Piece of bread with... I didn't have any of And pop. Big butter. And we're away from the crowd. We go sit in the grass. Is that a park? They got a live band over there. What do you think, Swiffer? The good stuff? thing is to pass out flyers. This is my favorite car of the show. 30, what was it? 4? 33. 3? V12. Just a gorgeous car. Yep, 33 Lincoln. But as far as a classic, this has got to be my favorite of the car show. Just gorgeous. 
One of six. I think we're getting ready to go. Getting all loaded up now. It's starting to get late and I still need to go get some green food. <laughs> I ran out of groceries. He's also got his bikes and his high wheel already, already up there.